Hey everybody, I want to do a quick take video today um, talking about a often overlooked predictor of what a day is going to be like. So in hang gliding, anytime you go flying, whether it's hang gliding, sailplanes, airplanes, anything, you really want to know what the air is going to be like before you put yourself in it. And you can't see the air, but there are some things that you learn to look for and you can kind of predict what it's going to be like what it's going to feel like before you fly, so you can make an informed choice. something that people often overlook is really easily attainable and it is the barometric pressure. So looking up is it a high pressure day or a low pressure day? And I'll get into how to tell if it's high pressure or low pressure from what the barometric reading is. But the basic traits are on a high pressure day there could still be thermals even though high pressure is very stable conditions. In high pressure you can expect usually pretty clear blue skies or very few clouds and those stable conditions mean that th what thermals there are tend to be broken. They're not very well formed. They tend to be kind of narrow. They feel squeezed together and I'll talk about why what's going on in a high pressure that makes these traits be what they are because there's a reason. Everything happens for a reason. But um, yes, high pressure days you can expect broken thermals that are not well formed, they tend to be punchy, sharp edges. Uh, they do tend to sometimes be stronger in feet per minute, meters per second, uh, but that's because they're kind of squeezed into a smaller area. I just lost my light here. So you can imagine then the flip side of that would be a lower pressure day. Now if the pressure is too low, low pressure is unstable. And if it's too unstable, you can have thunderstorms or rain. But if it's lower pressure, but not raining, or you're in a drier climate where that's not as much of a concern here in New York, if it's low pressure, it's freaking raining. But um, lower pressure days, the thermals tend to form nicely together into what feels like a bubble or a column. Um, they tend to have smoother edges and more consistent climb rate throughout. So they're not punchy little things that you have to fly into and then put the glider up on a wingtip and try to stay in it and fight to stay in it. They tend to be much nicer. Um, now, why are these traits what they are? So in a high pressure, well, when you look at a, a map of where the high pressures and the low pressures are, you're usually looking from a top down, I'll try to superimpose one right here, but you're looking from a top-down view and there's H's and L's to show you where high pressures and low pressures are. And that's great. And maybe you know what a high pressure and a low pressure is. And maybe you know that they rotate in different directions and you can predict, depending on which side they are from you, what the wind direction is going to be based on the rotation of the high or the low. And maybe you know that in the middle of a high pressure it tends to not be very windy, very stagnant air and as you get closer to the edges, it's windier. But in a low pressure, it gets windier as you get closer to the middle of the low. And the part that people kind of miss a lot in understanding what's going on is because that map is from a top-down view of highs and lows, you have to think of it in three dimensions. So if you kind of rotate the map, and I'm gonna to try to put some kind of a graphic in here without spending too much time. But if you rotate that map, in a high pressure, the reason the pressure is higher is that there is literally more air being kind of dropped in that area and it's generally descending air and is being compressed or pressurized in that area. And where's that air coming from? Well, it's coming from a low pressure. Why does all of this happen? Because of the sun and asymmetric heating of the Earth's surface causes air. It's like a big convection oven. Some air gets hot and goes up and it has to come down somewhere. It cools, it comes back down. And on a big scale, we get these high and low pressure systems. My reflect reflector's like bouncing all over the place and my ADD can't handle it. Um, so that is a quick thing to look at to kind of judge 
uh, a flying day and what the conditions are going to be like. So an interesting thing today, I'm up on launch at Ellenville today, and something kind of interesting today is that the day started out as a high pressure and there were very few clouds, it looked very stable, and some people flew, it was kind of gusty, it looked punchy, it was very predictably high pressure conditions. I just checked the barometric pressure and it's not so high pressure anymore. It's not low pressure, but it's much lower than it was. And the forecast for tomorrow was kind of southerly winds, which we usually get when it's prefrontal, meaning before a front comes through, before the pressure drops, before a low pressure, before unstable weather. So today, the conditions are rapidly changing, and the question is, what are the conditions now? Not what were they. Before, it was very clearly high pressure. I took some B-roll, and there were very few clouds. What clouds there were were pretty thin because the air was very stable. They were kind of shredded because you can imagine what, what shredded, punchy lift would look like in cloud form. That's what it looks like. The clouds look a little bit better today. It looks a little bit nicer for soaring, but it's still gusty and punchy and it's getting windier. And it brings me to one last thing, which is these general traits or rules of thumb for a higher pressure day or a lower pressure day are great for a typical day. I, I'm sure I heard this somewhere, but I've kind of coined the saying that on days where it's not one or the other, it's predictably unpredictable. So some days you can look at the conditions, you can look at a bunch of different weather websites, you could look at the barometric pressure and know if it's high pressure or low pressure, get an idea what the thermals are gonna feel like from experience or knowledge or both. But some days it's kind of hard to predict because it's in between or there's a lot of different things going on and one thing says it'll be this way, but one thing says it's going to be different. And what do you know? The thing that you know is that you don't know. And in flying, you really need to be careful with you don't know because you can't roll the dice in flying. You, you have to be perfect or strive to be perfect because it can be unforgiving. People always say aviation is unforgiving. And if you've been around flying long enough, you know that that's not really true because you see people get away with some crazy shit pretty regularly. But it can be very unpredictable and very unforgiving. So it could be a little thing and it's unforgiving. So predictably unpredictable is the last part of this thing. Um, there's a lot of information. So how do you know at your home site if it is high pressure or low pressure? Besides looking at the sky and the clouds and kind of learning what to look for, there's a lot of information on the internet. I don't need to get into all of that right now. Um, the standard pressure and temperature is 29.92 and 15 degrees Celsius. Now you need to adjust that for your home site based on altitude because that's at sea level. and if it's not 15 degrees Celsius, you need to adjust that for the temperature as well because warmer air is less dense. And again, there's lots of resources on the internet. I don't need to get into this on a video. You can just look up the formula for it. It's really quick. There's websites that you can just plug in the altitude and the temperature and it'll give you like the standard pressure for that altitude. But then you can look at any small airport um, weather channel, you can look pretty much anywhere and find the local barometric pressure and compare that to what standard pressure should be for that day at that altitude at that temperature and see is it higher or lower? Is it higher pressure or lower pressure? Is the air compressed in any thermals that are going to be generated because the sun still heats up the ground? Are they going to be broken and jumbled and squeezed? And while they're going up, the other air is descending, so they're going to have these sharp, rough edges, and it's going to be no fun. Or is it kind of a lower pressure day where it's a little bit less stable and you might get bigger thermals, but they might be a little more user friendly. And you kind of want a balance of these things. If it gets a kind of a joke in soaring is as it gets less and less stable or lower and low pressure, it gets better and better for soaring right up until it gets too good and then there's thunderstorms. So inst some instability is good for soaring. Um, and relating all of this to airplane flying as well, clear blue sky days, people talk about clear air turbulence, 
and how you know they, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, it's very stable. I thought it was gonna be really smooth and it's actually really bumpy and they don't understand why. And that's what's going on, is in this high pressure, it's like there's a faucet above you and all the air in the whole area is descending and the air in your whole area is getting compressed and squished. Meanwhile, the sun is still heating up the ground and there's still kind of like a boiling effect happening as the air near the surface gets heated and it's trying to rise but because the air around it is descending, it kind of gets squeezed into these little pockets that try to go up and you end up um, flying in an airplane. It feels like driving on a cobblestone road. In a hang glider or a paraglider, it can be a little bit different than that because the speeds are so different and the wing is flexible. But generally, high pressure days expect it to be turbulent. And uh, now you know, if you haven't checked barometric pressure before flying, Start taking a look and then see what the day is like and try to equate that, you know, this is what the thermals were like, this is why. And then after a little while, you kind of learn what to look for with the clouds and the sky and you can get a good read on what your thermals are going to be like that day, if there are thermals, if they're usable, just based on what type of day it is. And that way you're making a more educated decision before you fly. You're not throwing yourself into air and finding out what it's like you know what it's gonna be like before you fly and you can choose to partake or keep the glider in the bag for the day. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Cheers, bye. All right, so one quick add-on to everything I said yesterday. Uh, this would be a huge omission if I left this out, talking about high pressure, low pressure, how it affects the flying conditions. If you are at a flying site that gets a glass off or a wonder wind at the end of the day, that is far more likely to happen on a high pressure day than a low pressure day. And the reason for that is that a high pressure air mass is very stable, there's less mixing. So the entire mass of air that is in that geographic area is moving as one. There's less mixing, there's less kind of like jumbling and less, there could be layers, but it's mostly moving as one thing. And that's when we have wind, wind is basically just a whole mass of air moving across the ground. And because we are stuck on the ground normally when we're not flying, when we're stuck on the ground, we're like, oh, there's wind, but it's really the air moving past us. And we think everything revolves around us all the time. Um, so, Following up on the video that I shot yesterday, uh, I did end up flying at the end of the day, very end of the day. It did mellow and get kind of nice, but uh, kind of predictably based on the barometric pressure that I had looked up and seen that it wasn't a high pressure anymore in the day, we didn't really get a classic wonder wind at the end of the day. It did mellow as the heating kind of settled down um, convection stopped mixing the lower level air with the upper level um, winds aloft and it stopped being as gusty, as windy. Uh, a bunch of kind of newer paraglider pilots got to fly at the end of the day, which was pretty cool. There was a lot of smiling faces in the landing zone. But we did not get a classic glass off that Ellenville does often get, usually later in the year, you know, later in the summer. But again, that is because later in the summer, we tend to have more high pressure days, more stable, and the entire air mass moves as one, and you get those kind of glass off conditions. So just wrapping up, you know, I, I stick by everything I said yesterday. I literally shot that video in one take. So sorry, it's a little rough, but I wanted to keep it quick. And I just, I would feel really bad if I left this detail out because a lot of sites, you're looking for that glass off at the end of the day, that smooth air, you can fly around everywhere. Um, it's smooth and, and really fun. Like that, those are the relaxing flights that for a lot of us, that's, that's why we do this. It's not about how high can we really get or how far can we go. It's just about the love of flying. And those days are just magical. So um, looking at barometric pressure is a great way to predict if it's going to happen for you at the end of the day or not. Um, again, thanks for watching. If you like this video, if you like the content or the style of the video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos. 
And uh, if you're really enjoying these, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, see ya.